for Jason. You guys like him? Again. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Y'all doing good? good? I'm good, I'm good. Well, I'm better. A couple of weeks ago, I wasn't so good. Had a couple of moles on either side of my face. So I had this friend, and he goes, I got a home remedy for that. I said, well, tell me about it. He says, well, just tie some strings around them, choke them off. Three days later, they'll dry up, fall right off. No pain. No scars, no doctor fees. So I said, do it. Now, I didn't ask him to do it because he has a medical background. I asked him to do it because he has an English accent. Okay. What is it about an English accent? Women love that. We're crazy. We, we can go into a restaurant and a guy will be like, I'm going to fix your burger up real nice and pretty for you. We'll be like, no thanks just the way it's supposed to come. And there could be nothing wrong with that burger. But if we go into a restaurant and the guy goes, I'm so sorry, I dropped your burger on the floor and I trod on it, so I spit on it to clean it off. Will that be all right? And we'll be like, hell yeah, bring it up to this like it. <laughs> you can be walking down the street, the guy will pull up beside you. Would you like a ride? Hmm, English accent. <laughs> shoveling that duct tape off to the side. We won't be needing that till later. <laughs> You'd be like, he can't be a serial killer. He's English. <laughs> I guess we forgot where Jack the Ripper was from. <laughs> so anyway, I want to thank y'all for coming out. My boss is here tonight. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, now, you know, I asked him not long ago if I could have some personal days. And he goes, you get 104 personal days a year. I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah, they're called Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not saying he's empty-headed, but if I stand really close to him, I can hear the ocean. <laughs> oh, there went my, there went my review, didn't it? You know what? I decided I don't like people. I mean, I like you guys, but I don't like people. The other day I was driving down I-30, there was about 20 of us driving, and all right, I'll admit it, we were speeding, okay, we were. And a cop pulls me over. And he comes up and he goes, ma'am, you were speeding. I said, yeah, but so were the other 19 cars. Why'd you pull me over? He goes, you ever been fishing? I said, yeah. He goes, did you ever catch all the fish? <laughs> so apparently I'm the one that didn't get away. <laughs> ordered myself one of those two egg breakfasts. I said to the waiter, I said, I want one egg really, really runny, but I want the other one as hard as a rock. And I want two strips of bacon, one really crisp and the other one real limp and greasy, you know? And I want my hash browns brown on the outside, but cold on the inside. And I want my toast to be so dry and brittle that it just breaks into crumbs when I touch it with a knife. And he goes, ma'am, I don't think we can do that. I said, really? Because you did last week when I was here. <laughs> So I've got to do something about this anger. I do. I went into the bookstore. I said, well, you know what? I'll, I'll find a book about it. So I go in. I ask the sales girl. I said, where's your self-help section? She goes, well, if I told you that would defeat the purpose now, wouldn't it? Like, Bitch. So I went to a therapist. I said, doctor, please help me. I don't like other people. I just don't. And I know that's not right. I should like others. And he goes, Pat, remember, we're here to help others. I said, yeah, doctor, what the fuck are the others here for? <laughs> Come on, give me a break. I didn't pay. <laughs> so you know what I do? I found, a, I found a release. When I'm feeling bad, I go outside and I whistle. And you know why I do this? What? That's right, I whistle just like that. Because when I whistle, the neighbor's dog runs to the end of his chain and chokes himself. <laughs> I don't know why I find that funny, but I do. I think that's hilarious. I think all this anger stems from my first husband, because he was kind of a jerk. I was 
was a nice wife. It was his birthday one year. Well, it was his birthday every year, but this one particular year, I decided I'd get him an exotic pet. So I go to the pet store and I tell the guy I want an exotic pet. And he goes, well, how about this monkey? And I'm like, oh my God, what a cute little monkey. How much is it? And he goes, $1,000. Whoa, I didn't pay $1,000 for my first car. So I said, what makes this monkey worth $1,000? And he said, because it gives blowjobs. <laughs> and I said, do you take a check? <laughs> so I give him the check and I take the monkey home. And I'll be damned if that monkey doesn't give blowjobs. So now I'm freed up to work in the garden, read some books, watch my soaps. And about two weeks later, my husband comes to me and he says, I want a divorce. <laughs> Turns out the fucking monkey could cook, too. <laughs> so as far as, far as I know... <laughs> as far as I know, they're still together and they might even be married. <laughs> we had a couple of kids from that union. My son, he's here tonight. I don't know if you saw him. Now my son is a tall, good-looking guy. And I'm not just saying that because I'm his mom. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's, he's tall, he's blonde, he has green eyes. You know what? He looks like Brad Pitt. I like to go that far. Which is weird because I don't look like Brad Pitt. And his dad, the monkey lover, he doesn't look like Brad Pitt. So I figured either hospitals switch babies at birth or I just can't remember who I fucked in 1979. <laughs> here tonight. Now my brother-in-law, you know what, he's had a little trouble in his life, but he's trying to he's trying to do good and he's been here supportive of me. He even told me tonight that he's nervous. And I'm not sure if he's nervous for me or if it's just because we're so close to my state. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister's here. Now my sister I feel sorry for her. She just recently lost her job. Well she didn't lose it, it's still there. Somebody else is doing it. <laughs> So if anybody's hiring, she's a quick learner, I'll tell you. I only had to give her the recipe for ice one time. I have a monkey. I mean, I would hire her myself, but I don't need the, I don't need another person to say, fuck, I'm not doing that. I've got that position filled. And I have a daughter. Now she lives out in California and she's married. She is a sweet soul. I love this girl. She's so sweet and she's so innocent. She was talking to one of her girlfriends the other day and her girlfriend said, me and my husband have mutual orgasms. And my daughter said, I think we have State Farm. <laughs> her husband's a police officer and every time I go out for a visit, he asks me if I want to go on a citizen ride-along. That's where the citizen can go along and ride along with the police officer and see how they work. He wants to take his mother-in-law on a police ride-along. What are the chances I'm coming back from that? <laughs> All right? He gets home and my daughter says, where's mom? She didn't make it. She got caught in crossfire. <laughs> but I have a new husband now and he is great. I love my new husband. Go Jack! Go Jack! I had never really had much experience with the Jews before I met him. And so when I met him, he said, he said, he asked me what kind of car I drove. I said, well, I drive a Volkswagen. And he said, ooh, you drive a German-made car? I said, yeah, what's the problem? He goes, don't you hear the bones of six million Jews crunching every time you drive that? And I went, no, but I've got a kick-ass stereo and I, I, I run it real loud, you know. I did hear like a little cranking under the hood, but I didn't realize that's what it was. So I got rid of it. But, no, he's sweet. He really is. Now, we don't have any kids together, he and I don't. And I don't know if you've ever seen him, but he looks like Woody Allen. So we're not going to adopt either. <laughs> is so sweet. You know what he did for me? What? He bought me a mood ring. Because he was tired of coming home trying to find out if I was happy, if I was sad, if I was grouchy, whatever. So he bought me this beautiful mood ring. Isn't it pretty? Look. Yeah. And when I'm in a good mood, it's this beautiful shade of blue like it is tonight. 
And when I'm in a bad mood, it leaves a big fucking red mark on his forehead. <laughs> been so sweet, but there's one thing about him, he's not mechanical. Jews are not known for being mechanical. I came home the other night and I said to him, honey, I don't think one of my turn signals is working on my car. And he goes, well, let's go out and check it out. So I get in the car, I start it up, he goes to the back, I turn on the turn signal and I holler back, is it working? And he goes, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Thanks, babe. You were lying up. But he's very, very supportive. I mean, he knew I wanted to do this, and he was supportive of it, and he was proud of me. And I know that if I were to make this a career, become rich, famous, move to Hollywood, get my own HBO special, I know that he would tell everybody, I used to be married to her. <laughs> I have one question that's been bothering me for years, so I need to know. We've got enough guys out here who can help me with this. Why do men nickname their penis? I need to know this. Do any of you out there nickname your penis? Hell yeah. Yeah. What, what do you call it? Mr. Happy. Mr. Happy. Mr. Winky. Mr. Winky. Wally. Wally. Donald Dick. Donald Dick. I already know about yours. <laughs> Jesus! That's a good one. First of all, why don't you just call it Dick? That's a nickname. But you don't. You call it all these great names. Okay? Who had Mr. Winky? <laughs> Mr. Winky? Alright, now let me tell you something. That is not a romantic nickname. If you're trying to get some girl to, oh, give you oral sex, and you say, you want to give Mr. Winky a blowjob? She's going to go, mm, not tonight, I got a headache. Here's what you do. You call it Richard Gear. Because I promise you, if you say to your wife or your girlfriend, you want to give Richard Gear a blowjob? She's going to say, where and when. not, and I repeat, do not, and write this down, do not call it Heath Ledger. Because for those of us who saw Brokeback Mountain, we know where it's been. Don't anybody, don't anybody groan, you haven't heard Byron's material yet. That's it for me, you guys have been great, I appreciate it, thank you.